Hey guys, I know it's been a while, it's been about six months, but we're going to pop in here with a little update on the Caltech P11 9mm. Safety check for all the safety Nazis out there. Nothing there, nothing in there, and nothing between my ears. So, things that I've absolutely loved about this pistol. First and foremost, the versatility of it. And as you have around here a lot of holster choices and some of these I've made some of them I've accumulated just over time and there are a lot of ways to carry this you have pocket carry you have in the waistband carry you've got tuckable you got not so tuckable you got outside the waistband I mean just about every way you can carry a pistol you can carry this thing um, given some things it carries better than other you know but it's just very versatile. I mean, it's got a lot of, a lot of options available for it, and it also fills a lot of roles. That being, first and foremost, obviously a concealed carry. Uh, it also could be a very good home defense pistol. Um, some people prefer a pistol over shotgun or rifle, or you can do like I do and just use this as something in addition to your others. It also makes a very good vehicle gun, anti-carjacking or a get-you-home gun, uh, like, you know, you work downtown or way across town and zombie apocalypse breaks out you gotta get from work to home or whatever. Great for that, because there's another plus, firepower, I mean, number of rounds you can hold. This carries 10, uh, they got the 12-round flush fit also, I also have one of those, I just don't have it handy. And they do have the 15 round Smith & Wesson Series 59 magazines that plug right in there. Um, have not used one myself, I haven't got my hands on one because I've been spending money on a bunch of other crap. But, nice to have that option. Um, some folks have been saying that you have to use a Wolf upgrade spring for those magazines to get them to feed reliably in this. I don't know, but just so you know, that's the deal. Uh, another thing I really, 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 really like about this is... It's simplicity. It is just, it's basically like a 10 round revolver, is the way I look at it. Um, trigger is double action only. It's not a double single, so you have the same consistent pull every time. It's a firm pull, not a hard pull. It is an 8.5 pound trigger pull on this. Uh, the older ones, I think, had some ridiculous 10 or 12 pound thing, but you know, now they have 8.5 pound and it's firm you won't accidentally pull the trigger on this, and that's what I love about it. You don't have to worry about a manual safety. You don't have to worry about some goofy scissor-shaped Glock trigger. You don't have to, you know, it's just none of that fancy crap. It's simple, it's basic. Take down, I mean, let me just show you real quick here. Bam, 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 there it is. I mean, you know, you can't get much simpler than that. Put it back together, bam. And it's back. I mean, simple, basic, easy, good stuff. And as a side note, recommended ammo for this. Um, spear, gold dot, 115 grain, non plus P. Not 124 plus P, not 147 plus P, not 115 plus P plus 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 plus, none of that. This will technically handle it, but it's not recommended, and really you don't gain a whole lot with a plus P round in this kind of a gun. You got a short barrel, it doesn't have enough time in the barrel to really build up velocity to make use of that extra power. So all you get is a lot more recoil, a lot more muzzle flash, and a lot more wear and tear in the gun, and it's just not good, so. 115 grain. Alternative load would be the Hornady Critical Defense, 115 grain. Um, feeds really nice, low uh, low muzzle flash, low recoil, and just the only, the only minus I got against this is it really doesn't expand quite as much as these, doesn't penetrate quite as far, so eh, just getting kind of particular, and it also has a tendency sometimes to shed its jacket, whereas this is a bonded design and it stays in one piece, just something to consider. So ammo aside, and the recoil, sort of the side of that, as long as you're sticking with 115 grain, recoil's really not that bad. It is snappy, and you will feel it if you put, you know, at least a couple of runags through this in one day. 
but it's not bad. And it is better than some of the other options in there, subcompacts. We're talking like PF9, uh, the LC9 from Ruger, the Diamondback Arms DV9, which is a new offering that they have, uh, Taurus 709 Slim, I think is one of them. There's, you know, those are all, they're lighter weight, they're thinner, and you know, you're shooting the same round out of a gun that's lighter. This is already pretty darn light. This is under 20 ounces. Uh, fully loaded, I think it's right at 20, 21, maybe 19. I don't know, don't quote me on that, but it's it's pretty light. And you get below that, and every ounce counts. Uh, because every ounce lighter that you get, you're going to have more felt recoil, and that's getting transferred directly into this part right here. That's where you're going to feel it. Another thing is also the grip is shaped kind of squared, so, you know, it kind of digs in there because of that. But, simple solution for that for me was 10 bucks. Get one of these Hogue Hand All Junior slip-on sleeves, and that makes a huge difference, not only in felt recoil, but also in grip. Not that it had bad grip before, but that just it just makes it feel so much better. Highly recommended upgrade for that. So. It's kind of a plus and a minus at the same time, but uh, it's not as susceptible to limp wristing as some of the other designs. Again, with the whole power to weight ratio thing, this has enough mass to where you can shoot this single handed, limp wrist sideways, even gangsta style, upside down, uh, weak hand. I mean, I've, I've fired it every which way, and I cannot get the thing to jam. It just doesn't do it. Not that I wanted to, but I was just trying, and I couldn't. So that's awesome. But, kind of going to the bad part here. First and foremost, biggest gripe about this, and I believe I mentioned it previously, the finish blows. Now this is obviously not the factory finish. This was not a hard chrome model, unfortunately. This was originally a blued slide. And the bluing blows. It is the worst crap finish I've ever seen. You so much as fart at this thing, and it rusts. My solution to that was to strip the thing down, remove the sights, sand it, and I tried polishing it. Some guys will, will polish their slides and throw some wax on there and it works great for them. I tried that, it still rusted. No matter what I use for any kind of protectant, oil, anything, it just... So the way I got around it was scuff it up, prime it with a good primer, and I threw on VHT brake caliper paint for cars. Worked great, actually. The only problem I've had is it doesn't hold up as far as uh, wear from the holster. It doesn't flake off. Uh, I haven't had any problems with flaking, but around the muzzle from putting it in and out of the holster and right around here, a little bit of friction either from carrying or from the holster. You know, after about three months it started to kind of wear in there. So I just recoded it uh, probably a month and a half ago and it's been holding up good. Just make sure you prep your surface very well. And I let mine cure in the shed. I had it hanging up from a hook in the shed for about a week and 100 degree temps so it kind of bakes on there so but anyways five bucks I think is what I paid for a can of that stuff and I just had primer laying around you know five dollar solution can't beat it you can always go with the route of Duracoat which certain individuals on YouTube really like I don't um, and there's some others like uh, Cerakote and just others so you know but if you get a blued one or even a parkerized one pretty much plan on doing something about the finish because it's going to be an issue for a lot of folks. Some folks, they get lucky. Some folks, they don't have this crazy acidic sweat that I have or they live in climates where it's just freezing ass cold all the time. Well, I live in the desert, so sweat is just reality. Especially when you have a little bit of a fatness. Another thing is with all Caltex, they are not very highly polished guns. These are not highly refined, pull it out of the box, maybe clean it, and start using it. These, you kind of, I, I kind of regard them as like a kit gun. Um, you can buy one and clean it and use it, and a lot of folks do have luck with that, but by and large, a lot of them require a bit of uh, smoothing of the rough edges. And that is not just figurative, that's literal. Uh, the mold seams, like around here, there's one right down in the middle here, uh, around the trigger guard, inside the trigger guard. You know, there's just various places you have to either sand them. Uh, in my case, I even had to file some spots because um, with the pinky extension here, this part right here, where between that and the bottom of the magwell, 
it was pinching when this is fully inserted because it has just a little bit of a gap and this would move. So it would pinch. My solution for that was to file kind of a bevel in there and it just doesn't grab then. So, you know, it took me know, five minutes or something to do. Didn't cost me anything except a little bit of time. Solved the problem. For some folks, they would have been like, oh, it pinches my finger, it's a piece of crap gun, oh, it's awful, ah. Well, whatever, you know. If you don't want to put any time or money, you know, it's not even money. If you don't want to put any time or work into it, this ain't probably a good gun for you. you know, you'd probably be better off getting like a, I don't know, Glock or Ruger, but you're going to pay for it, you know. This is 250 to $300. I got this for 200 because it was used, but practically new. So, you know, I got a gun that I've put maybe, I don't know, $20 considering the $10 grip thing there and paint. That's about it. I got an awesome gun that shoots all the time, so but, you, know, you can consider it a minus because it's not perfect as is. Another thing is, if you're looking as far as pocket carry, because this is a very small gun, it's not really great for that. It's You can do it. Some folks, they prefer pocket carry, and when they talk pocket carry, most people think you're front pocket. I've tried this, and I've never been a fan of front pocket carry for several reasons, which I'll get into in another video. But it's just kind of thick and pretty darn heavy. Again, that whole 20 ounces kind of works against it in this case. Um, it's just, you see this thing kind of swishing around in your pocket like this, even if you get it in a holster. It may not look like a gun, but it looks like something. It draws attention. And, you know, people are like, what the heck is that? You know, it either looks like you got a gigantic raging boner, or you've stolen something from the store and loss prevention is going to stop you. So that could be kind of an issue. <laughs> Um, for rear pocket carry, I have used that for that, and as long as you have a t-shirt or a jacket or something that hangs over the pocket, and you have a good pocket holster that has an anti-print panel on it, or built into it, uh, not so much an issue, it just looks like you have a really huge wallet. And I mean huge, because I mean, let me just throw out my handy dandy uh, Aluma wallet, but just for reference and size, I mean this is kind of an average-ish size wallet. Yeah, pretty huge. So, but if you got cargo pants, it fits in there. You got a loose t-shirt that's untucked or a jacket. It covers up this top part here because it's thick enough that the top of your pocket kind of holds open a little bit and, you know, it, it fits in there, but it's still, you can, you know, if somebody looks straight down there, you can see a serial number and it's, you know, it's a gun. So, just something to think about. So, not so good for pocket carry, so that's kind of an e option. But for in the waistband, awesome. Uh, recoil, again, not terrible. It's lovable, but it's not fun. Um, typically, I only put about maybe uh, four mags or so through this uh, in a given session because after that, I mean, this is before this. I haven't really had a chance to do a whole lot of shooting with this, but um, as is, you really don't want to put a lot of mags through this. You're you're going to start feeling it right there. Uh, with the Hogue handle, it does help a lot, and you can put a lot more through it. I just haven't had a lot of money for ammo, so I haven't really been able to test how much I can put through there before I get two sword shoot. But, you know, it's something to consider. If you don't feel comfortable with a slip-on sleeve, or you just don't like them, or whatever, uh, something to consider. And one last thing is ammo selection. It is a little limited with this because, again, it's not built for plus P really. It's pretty much designed around 115 grain standard pressure plain Jane ammo. And again, you know, the gold dots and critical fence are very good cartridges. Even when fired out of you get plenty of adequate penetration and expansion to where that's kind of a moot point. You don't really need 124 plus P to get what you need out of it. This will do the job. This little thing here, that's all you need. So. That being said, I freaking love this gun. Again, anybody that is considering this and is thinking, would you know, this be something I would recommend? By God, I would recommend it to anyone. Highly. Just bear in mind what I've mentioned as far as you know the uh, finish and some of the little smaller details, which I consider to be kind of you know not really huge, not deal breakers for me. You know, considering the price and versatility of this pistol is just hard to beat. So, there you have it. For what's worth, my two cents on that deal. Thanks for watching.